Welcome back to the showroom here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm Stefan Schwartz, the product manager for Ironwood Machinery here at Styles, and today we're gonna go over the FX750 Spindle Shaper. Taking a look at the controls on the FX750, these are almost identical to the TS750 as well as the FX550 shaper. So all of our shapers in the Ironwood lineup have a very similar setup for controls, giving you easy repeatability for tooling changes and setups, whether they're later this afternoon or 17 days from now that I've got to run the exact same profile. Simply here by loosening my locking knob and adjusting my spindle height with my analog indicator, I get live readouts of where the spindle's located so I can run the same tooling path on the same profile weeks down the road and get the exact same result. So whether I'm stacking tooling on the spindle or changing in and out different profiles for each application, I can always reach the same result once I've set it up and dialed it in once, I can simply and quickly repeat it again. Here I've got my spindle locking knob as well, so if I want to loosen the spindle over there or change tooling, I can lock this in place, not allowing it to rotate. And then over here on the left side, I've got my RPM indicator lights, as well as my e-stop, forward and reverse, and on-off buttons. As you'll see here, as soon as I engage the shaper into either forward or reverse, the indicator light will not only tell me which direction the spindle's actually rotating, but I also have the live readout here of the display, how many RPMs I'm driving the spindle. So to adjust the speeds on our ironwood shaper, we're simply gonna shift the pulley and change the gear ratio. All of these shapers are five speeds, three, four, six, eight, and 10,000 RPMs. Obviously, depending on the size and diameter of your tool, as well as the workpiece that you're working, whether it's hard or soft woods or even melamine or plywoods, that's all gonna depend on your tooling speed and RPMs in order to maintain a solid cut quality. Taking a look at the spindle and the adjustable fences on the FX750 here, I've got an inch and a quarter diameter spindle as a standard on the Ironwood line, but we also have several other spindle sizes in the event that you have current and existing tooling, we can certainly find the tool holder to match. Additionally, I can stack about six inches of tooling under the nut here, so that allows me to stack various tools to run multiple profiles. Again, using the simple height adjustment, I can just crank the spindle up or crank the spindle down. Additionally, every shaper is pre-drilled and tapped for power feeders, so whether I'm running materials flat or upright, doing a profile on the end, or maybe cutting a groove through the middle of the workpiece like so, I can apply constant and consistent hold down to the workpiece along with these fences as well. I can also adjust these table fingers on the fences to give me extra support as well as keep the operator away from the cutter head while I'm running grooves through the middle of a workpiece or profiling as well. On the back of the Ironwood FX750, you'll have all the adjustments for the fences here easily and simply located. By loosening these two locking levers, I can move the entire manifold forward or backwards on the table, getting my workpiece closer or further away from the cutter head to do wider workpieces, as well as I have two individual readouts for left and right in-feed and out-feed fences to be able to adjust how much material I'm taking off. So if I'm removing a lot of stock on a workpiece, I can pull my in-feed fence in closer to the cutter, have my out-feed fence be further away. That way the workpiece pre and post cutter head is being consistently held down against the fences unilaterally. All right, last but not least, I wanna talk about the miter gauge you're seeing here on top of the uh, sled. This is actually allowing me to do any angular cuts, dial in a specific profile or radius. I can adjust this here for certain widths, lengths, and also use the clamp to secure the workpiece. Again, keeping my operator even further away from the cutter and in a safe place at all times during machine operations. This guy drops into a T-slot inside the table, uh, which has been machined in there. So whether you're doing a coping sled, clamps, the smiter gauge, you can basically put any kind of option or accessory you want in there. Um, this is also sitting on top of the sliding table and attachment. This is not standard with the Ironwood shapers, but certainly an excellent addition if and so you choose to desire. Um, this just allows me nice and easily to run my workpiece through the cutter head. Again, keeping the operator even further away, as you can imagine if I'm profiling a piece here, I can clamp it down and simply hold on to the reins right here, driving the piece through the cutter head in either direction, maintaining a safe distance at all times. Thanks again for joining us here in Grand Rapids, Michigan to discuss Ironwood's FX750 Spindle Shaper. I'm Stefan Schwartz, and it's been a pleasure having you with us.